is our next speaker, and it is Matthias. Now, this guy is amazing, and he was actually working under a speaker we had last year called Hani Farid, and he's going to talk to us all about disinformation, how we can fight that. We all know that's the scary part when it comes to AI and technology. It's, it it nice. can kind of it trick us a little bit. <laughs> but so Mattia, nice. wherever you are, I'm going to invite him up to the stage to do his little talk. Hey. Oh, there you are. Hey, hey, hey. Cool. How are you, Matya? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. It's been such a good day. I know, right? I love the suit as well. Thank You're you. I appreciate it. it. Yeah. How was it for you then, working under Annie Farid? Because we had him last year, and he was amazing. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, it's been great. Um, it's been just so inspiring, you know, because Hani is one of the computer scientists that not only thinks very deeply about a tech and about AI and about all these models. He thinks about what they do to societies and, and how societies feed into them. And that's just been so interesting to me. Yeah, it sounds amazing. And I've seen a little bit of your slides, and they look <laughs> epic. So I'm going to leave you to it. Teach us how to fight the bad side of AI. Sounds great. Let's do it. OK, so hi, everyone. Hey, ahoy. I was not given a microphone because <laughs> other guys needed it before me. So Hopefully this will work out. But yes, my name is Matty Bohacek. Uh, I'm originally from here, from Prague. And I am a student researcher at Stanford University. I work with Hani Farid, who was here last year. And I, in many ways, want to follow up on his talk. And I want to give you guys an update on where we're at with fighting the deception and disinformation created by AI. We all good? OK. <laughs> cool. All right, so I want to start right here. This was in November of 2023, so a year ago, and a deep fake of Anderson Cooper that we created at our lab opened CNN's The Whole Story, which is one of their main um, news show that airs at 6 p.m. And when we send this final deep fake to, to the news show, some of the managers and, and producers of the show came back to us shocked because they had a really hard time telling apart the real Anderson from our deepfake Anderson. And mind you, these are people who work with Anderson on a daily basis. So that was a pretty good sign that our deepfake was ready for the air. Now, all of you here today will kind of have to take my word for that because I didn't have time to uh, put the whole deepfake in my slides, but there is a link at the end. What I want to do instead in these 10 or 15 minutes or so is to walk you through that pipeline, tell you guys how a deepfake like this one is made and can make it you know, from my laptop to, <laughs> to CNN. And, um, Perhaps, even more importantly, how we can detect these deep fakes, how we can fight this deception created or amplified by AI. Sounds good? <laughs> cool. Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. All right. So the story really begins in the summer of 2023 when we were approached by CNN with the prospect of creating this deep fake. And the thing to know about our lab is that we're very much in the business of AI and digital forensics which means that you know, we were familiar with deepfake detection, but not so much in the business of deepfake creation. And so when we said yes to this project, we were not only saying yes to like, this fun collaboration with CNN, we were really saying yes to an honest exploration in which you know, the two of us, me, Professor Farid, as a team of two, were trying to answer this question. How far can we go? Can we get with this deep fake as a team of two, starting from scratch, with just open source tools and my laptop? So everything that I'll discuss here today was done on my personal laptop. No GPUs, no fancy tech, just a laptop, like, you know, the one you use for school and stuff. And this, you know, perhaps a bit more technical slide, um, shows the pipeline we arrived on. I really want to dwell on it for just a sec, because when I talk to folks, they quite often can really um, comprehend or think about the specific steps that go into creating a deepfake. And I just want to uncover that. This is all it is. So, OK, this was a year ago, and we wanted to create a deepfake of Anderson Cooper. There are two main parts to this process. The first big step is to create the audio part. So um, you know, we grabbed like 40 seconds of his samples from YouTube. Really, we didn't get anything from CNN. It was just me going on YouTube. and. 
stealing, <coughs> taking some data uh, from YouTube, and then you go to 11 Labs, which is a tool online where you can just go upload like 40 seconds of someone's voice, and they will clone that voice for you. And what that means is that once the voice is cloned, you can just type, and that person or that voice will say whatever you want. And so you could easily plug in ChatGPT, but we had a script, so we just plugged that in. And that's it, that's easy. No coding, no expertise whatsoever, just a website, a couple bucks, you're done. The second part is the video part, so that's shown on the right. And there are four steps to this. Now, when I say steps, uh, this really is just like some code or like some script doing the job for us, but still, it's pretty straightforward. So the first step is to identify the face in each frame of the video. And it's not just the face, it's also the area around the mouth. The next step, and this is really the most important part, is to sync the lips, right? Because like you have this new audio of that person saying whatever you want the person to say, and I need to make sure that in the video, the lips will be, you know, like shaped properly and opening and closing at the right times. That's all this is. This is really the, the hefty substantive part. The third step says enhance photorealism. It really is just like fancy speak for seeing improve quality. It's not much, much more than that. And then the last step is to put it all back together. And you know, I'm spending time here because knowing how these things work, how these steps actually function, will help us detect the stuff down the line. You know, that pipeline was made a year ago, it took us like four weeks. When we fast forward a year to today, there really is just one step. No code is required. All you need to do is to go to one of these apps online, pay a couple bucks, and all of this will be done for you. No coding, no expertise, and you also need much less data. Like, all it takes is a single picture of someone and 20 seconds of their voice. Think about that. I'm pretty sure that most folks in the audience have at least one picture of them online. Who here does not have like one picture of them online? Is there anyone in the audience who doesn't have a single photo of them online? Can I see a hand? No, I, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't see a single hand. Shout if you're, oh, oh, there is one person over there. Congrats, you rock, but you know, like you're, you're just like one out of a couple hundred. Um, so that's that. So all of you here are susceptible. I could take your picture and 20 seconds of your voice, that's it, all it takes. I, I will not put you on CNN, but um, if, if you want, just hit me up afterwards. Um, so that's that, that's the landscape today. And I just want to play you two clips to see um, if you can spot which one is real and which one is fake. This will be Anderson Cooper speaking. That is the President of the United States seeming to suggest that someone may have deserved firing in real life because she had been fired three times from a reality TV show. A TV show he continued to have her on. Okay, first things first. That is the President of the United States seeming to suggest that someone may have deserved firing in real life because she had been fired three times from a reality TV show, a TV show he continued to have her on. I realize now that the animations were just like animated in right away, so you know which one is which, but the point here is that they're very similar. The first one was a real Anderson Cooper, the second one was a fake Anderson Cooper, and Maybe you heard some mistakes in there, but it's virtually perfect. And this is, by the way, suggested or confirmed by rigorous studies done at our lab, which you know, ask folks, ordinary folks, lay people who don't have any expertise in AI, to try to tell real and fake voices apart, you can do it as a person. Um, you just can. Okay, let's talk about video real quick. So this right here is the mayor of London, and let's see what he has to say. I am told that on the issue of deep fakes, one of the world's leading experts is Professor Hani Farid. Uh, having spent some time with him, however, I can tell you that he is a bit of a dipshit. Yeah, um, so one of the great things of working at a lab where you know, we study deep fakes and create deep fakes is that you get to make funny clips like these. And this actually is something called the Hani test. So Hani, Hani Farid is my advisor, the professor I work with. He, for some reason, like whenever there's a new engine or there's a new model to create deep fakes with, he wants me to create like this very clip of just like someone, some celebrities and politician calling him a dipshit. So it's not me, like this is him wanting this. Um, anyway, um, there might have been some lag because I saw that um, the, the video was, was playing kind of off from the, from the audio, but this is where commercial tools get you today. 
This right here is Vice President-elect J.D. Vance. Um, and let's see what, what, um, what he has to say. Universities are dedicated to deceit and lies, not to the truth. So much of what we want to do in this movement and in this country, I think, are fundamentally dependent on going through a set of very hostile institutions, specifically the universities. They control the knowledge in our society. And they control what we call truth and what we call falsity. They provide research that gives credibility to some of the most ridiculous ideas that exist in our country. If any of us want to do the things that we want to do for our country and for the people who live in it, we have to honestly and aggressively attack the universities in this country. We've got to shut down that so-called data science of dis- I'm not sure why that was the case, but there seems to be like a pretty consistent lag between the video and the audio. But anyway, a couple things I hope you picked up was that the, the area of the Mao that was deep faked was not really synced with the rest of his body, right? Like he was kind of like moving and you know, gesturing in ways that didn't really make sense with regard to what he was saying. And this is one of the most important signals that we have in deep face. I'm sorry that I couldn't play it um, as, as it, you know, um, as it was supposed to be. But anyway, that is the insight we will use. And then the rest of this talk, I'm, I wanna cover how to actually detect these deep fakes, how we can go about that. <laughs> Thanks. So the first approach, there are two approaches. The first one is identity-based. Here, we're trying to capitalize on specific features of individual speakers. So here, the example you're seeing on the screen is President Zelensky of Ukraine. And what we do here is we train a specific model to detect President Zelensky's deepfakes. And to do that, we leverage a bunch of different signals and features in his speech, what he is saying, and the gestures, how he's kind of using his body language, and also facial mannerisms. So the two particular figures, the plots you're seeing, are on the left, the one that is focusing on facial features, facial muscles, on the right, the one about gestures. And it turns out, and you, you see this in the plots, there are these very strong correlations in how we talk, how we behave, how we gesture, and but the deep fakes only you know, recreate or regenerate this area of the face or the mouth, well then the rest, the body and the, the face and what the patient is seeing will not be in sync. And that's all we need. Turns out these are some of the best deep fake detectors that get an accuracy of above 99%, even on very challenging data sets. So this is the first approach. It's just like go for the specific things you can find in a particular speaker, such as President Zelensky, who is you know, of significance, and so he's susceptible to being deep fake. However, most of us don't have like, you know, hours or <laughs> tens of hours of content online, and so we have to have measures to also detect deep fakes of ordinary people. And this is where this, this latest work called Lost in Translation comes in. This right here is Sarah, one of my amazing lab mates, and this is a deep fake of her. It's a deep fake that I created on my laptop. Now, here's the insight, here's the key insight. While I was working on the Anderson Cooper deepfake, for some random reason, I don't really remember why, I covered my ears, and then I was watching the deepfake, and all of a sudden, I got this like weird feeling. I was like, something's off. I can't really tell what she's saying or what he was saying. And we're trying to capitalize on that in this approach. It's actually super, super simple. There are just two steps. You have a video, you wanna see if it's a deep fake, here are the two steps. The first one is to run audio transcription. So from the audio, you wanna get what the person was saying. So here in this case, it's I make my breakfast, then I take my tea and breakfast to my favorite place to sit and read the news while I drink tea and eat breakfast. So by the way, um, Sarah is British, if you couldn't tell um, from the tea. Um, but anyway, so this is the audio. This is what you would hear in the video. Now, the second step, the red part, is video lip reading. And this is a process in which we use an AI model to only look at the mouth region, you know, disregard the audio part, and try to predict what the person was saying just based on their mouth shape and mouth movement. And here, in this deep fake, you see that the video lip reading is predicting things I used to do as a basket. I used to do as a basket. It's like nonsense, it's gibberish. It doesn't make any sense. And this is all you need. Now, all we do is we compute the distance between the audio transcription and the video lip reading, and that's our signal. And right here, I'm showing a plot of two distributions. So the blue distribution um, are real authentic videos, so no deepfakes, and the orange or red, depending on your preference, um, are deepfakes. 
And the x-axis is this distance score, the distance between the audio transcription and the video lip reading. And you see that all the real videos are below 0.5 because the closer to the left, to zero, means the closer the two transcripts are. And on the other hand, the orange or red videos, which are deep fakes, are much further to the right, which means they're much more dissimilar. And that's all we need, perfect separation, right there. Now, these are the kind of conventional ways of detecting deep fakes, but since this conference and, and you know, today, the whole day, you good there? Cool. <laughs> um, yeah, since this conference is about the future and where we can get, I wanna also spend a bit um, talking about what's next for deep fakes, because all these like speech deep fakes, they're kind of there, they kind of got there, and now the next big thing is this. Freeform text-to-video deep fakes. Not sure, okay, cool. Well, one of them is moving. I'm not sure why the rest is not moving. Okay, cool. Um, so anyway, so these are um, deep fakes or AI-generated videos that are created from text. So has anyone here used Dolly or Midjourney or any of these like text-to-image models? Anyone in the audience? Some people have, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, nice. So this is the same thing, but for video. You just, you just write your prompt, write your description, and you'll get a video of that. And it's no longer just speeches, it's anything you want. Could be a person dancing, could be a person doing something really bad. Doesn't need to be a person at all. Can be anything and anyone, and that's where we're headed. These models, right now, most of them are closed source, so they're you know, at the companies, but they will be out there soon, and at that point, um, this will really take over deep fakes, in my opinion. I'm happy to share that over the summer, during my internship with Google Research, we built the first benchmark, so that means like a data set or like a resource for training and detecting and testing these systems, um, and also a detector for these deep fakes, but this is coming, so be ready for this. And moving forward, I would like to encourage you to to really think about what you see online, because the paradigm is really shifting. Last year, Hani was talking about how to tell you know, fake things apart and how to identify what's fake, what's not true. I think that the question will become, you know, among all the fake stuff and all the noise, what is real? And so think about that, and if you're interested in any of this, if you're passionate about media, passionate about information, technology, come talk to me, and I'm pretty sure you can have a lot of fun and great success with this. All right, so that's that. Thank you so much for your attention, and hope to chat with you all.